Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do an overall review of the project Ravencoin. I'd heard about it a few months ago and I intended to look into it and then I honestly forgot. I posted a poll on Twitter and Ravencoin won, so here we are. In the spirit of transparency, this is not a paid review and Ravencoin is not in my portfolio. Quick reminder to everyone watching, if you haven't hit that like button yet or that subscribe button, please do so. Also, if you want to chat, feel free to join my Discord. My normal friendly disclaimer is I am not a financial advisor, all investments have inherent risk, and please always do your own research. After Bitcoin was created, it was eventually recognized that assets could be created on top of or embedded in the Bitcoin blockchain. New assets can be added to the blockchain by sending transactions, which also carry information on asset issuance and transfer. However, there's a downside to this. Bitcoin nodes are unaware that the assets are being embedded, meaning that Bitcoin must be a part of every transaction, even though the primary purpose of that transaction might be just to send the asset. The bigger issue is that if the Bitcoin client sends that Bitcoin without being aware of the embedded asset transaction, it will destroy the asset. Enter Ravencoin. Ravencoin is a fork of the Bitcoin code and aims to implement a blockchain which is optimized specifically for the use case of transferring assets such as tokens from one holder to another as an alternative to Bitcoin or Ethereum. Ravencoin is a free and open source project that started with no ICO and no pre-mine. Ravencoin is not designed to be cash, it is intended to prioritize user control, privacy, and avoid censorship while allowing simple, optional additional features for users based on need. Let's talk about the project history. Ravencoin made its debut on October 31st, 2017, and the mining binaries were released on January 3rd, 2018 to coincide with the ninth anniversary of Bitcoin's launch. The project is open source and gives credit to 430 Bitcoin developers in the opening paragraph of its white paper. I mention this because it has no formal team or group running the project. However, it is led kind of by Bruce Fenton and Sean Black. Bruce Fenton is a board member of the Bitcoin Foundation and is the CIO of Atlantic Financial. Tron Black is the lead developer of the project as well. He currently works for Medici Ventures, which is a subsidiary of Overstock.com. Ravencoin takes its name from the avian delivery system of choice in Westeros, one of the fictional continents created by the author George R.R. R. Martin in his fantasy series A Song of Fire and Ice. Ravens fill the role of passenger pigeons for use in traditional snail mail in the novels. On to the technology. Currently, the circulating supply is 2 billion coins with a max supply of 21 billion, unlike Bitcoin, which is 21 million. Raven is a proof-of-work project, but uses X16R for its algorithm, making it different than Bitcoin, which uses SHA-256. If I'm being honest, I really don't understand the technical details of the algorithms, but the one thing I do understand is the X16R is ASICs resistant. ASIC stands for Application Specific Integrated Circuits, and they're computers that are built with the sole purpose of mining cryptocurrencies, more specifically Bitcoin. The issue with that is the majority of Bitcoin's mining power is now centralized to Antpool, one of the largest Bitcoin mining pools, which is controlled by Bitmain. The controversy is that Bitcoin's network is supposed to be distributed, not centralized. So by making Raven ASICs resistant, they're preventing the same problem from happening in the future. Raven has a block time of one minute with block rewards of 5,000 RVN tokens. The rewards will be cut in half in approximately two years, same as Bitcoin. So how does this whole asset creation and transfer thing work anyways? To create an asset token, you are required to burn some RVN and provide a unique token name. As of right now, it costs 500 RVN as a creation fee. After that, you set the number of tokens and the decimal places you want them to have and whether or not you can issue more in the future. These tokens can be created by the protocol without the need for mining. These tokens are easily transferable and can represent anything unique and scarce such as artwork, rare video game items, stocks, gift cards, concert tickets, gold, land deeds, and the list goes on. An example of a use case would be Imagine an art dealer who wishes to transfer ownership of a physical painting to someone. The dealer creates a token on the system which is associated with a unique name and serial number. This token cannot be duplicated or destroyed and it serves as a digital stand-in for the physical painting. It also acts as a proof of authenticity, as the coin is unique and specific to that particular painting. Ravencoin developers have also mentioned that they can envision its system being used to simplify voting for shareholders in public companies. Users can also distribute RVN rewards to holders of a token. The use cases for these rewards range anywhere from customer loyalty points to a company's dividends. Raven also supports a messaging feature. Active communication channels are necessary for many token-based systems, and a common problem is that the token issuer cannot communicate with the token holders. This must be handled very carefully because the token holders may not want to be identified. To facilitate these channels, Ravencoin layers specialized communication tokens on top of the assets that you hold. Because the communication tokens are linked to the assets, only the asset holders receive the messages. Ravencoin implements the same process for voting. 
In their white paper, they state that one major downfall with the current systems is that if a publicly traded company wanted to get the votes from all of their shareholders on a decision, they would have to hire someone to get all the mailing addresses, and then a physical mailing would need to be sent out to all shareholders with the information on how to vote along with the voting form. Instead, Raven uses their messaging system, which will notify token holders of the vote, and the vote can be automated by the holders through the web or a mobile interface using the protocol built on the client. Raven will create an exact number of vote tokens and distribute them on a one-to-one -one basis to token holders. Currently, Ravencoin sits at number 62 on Live Coinwatch with a market cap value of 107 million. If you're interested in buying the token, you can pick it up on a bunch of different exchanges, the major ones being Binance, Upbit, and Bittrex. Ravencoin does have a desktop wallet available to Windows, Macs, and Linux, which can be found on their GitHub, as well as a web wallet called Pocket Raven, and mobile apps for Android and iOS. A notable mention is that Patrick Byron, the CEO of Overstock.com, is a public supporter of the Ravencoin project. He's publicly stated that Overstock has put millions of dollars into supporting the development of this project. As far as competition goes, tokenizing assets has been popular for a while, and several projects are aiming to provide functionality similar to Ravencoin. Ethereum and Waves give you the ability to create tokens, However, unlike Ravencoin, tokenization isn't the sole purpose of the project. Another very similar project is Counterparty. However, the major difference is that Counterparty functions on the Bitcoin network. This can be seen as a strength or weakness depending on who you're talking to. Projects like Wax and Enginecoin offer tokenized digital assets, but target online gaming more specifically. The project most comparable to Ravencoin would probably be Bitem. Their goals are almost identical, but how they're going about achieving them is very different. Unlike Ravencoin, Bitem held an ICO and does allow ASICs mining on the network, which are two very different things, more specifically, things that Ravencoin is quite proud of not doing. What's coming up in the future that we have to look forward to? Ravencoin is listed on Ledger's Trello for implementation into their hardware wallets, but I was reading in the Discord that they've been waiting on the Ledger to add their coin for something like five months, so I guess it's all really in Ledger's hands right now, and there's not a great estimation on when that might be implemented. I messaged an admin on their Discord, and they said that October 31st, assets go live on the platform. On their roadmap, phase two is what is currently in progress, and that consists of developing resistance to the ASIC miners, implementing rewards, and metadata usage. On to the pros. Ravencoin was built specifically for the transfer of assets, which alleviates any issues or concerns that they may be accidentally destroyed on the blockchain. Also, the fact that it was purpose-built makes it less likely to have tons of competition because it's focusing on one goal instead of trying to reinvent the wheel. Users can issue, track, and transfer assets on the platform, as well as easily send messages to one another. Ravencoin will provide strong security and protection to those underlying assets. By creating the blockchain to be ASICs resistant, they're proving that fair distribution of the project hashing power is a priority. The project also has some really good press around it. And also more recently, it's seen a huge jump in price that people are speculating is related to the fact that it was listed on Binance recently. Onto the cons. A concern for early investors would be dilution of tokens. Just like Bitcoin in its early stages, newly mined tokens make them a large percent of the total circulating supply, and the possibility of people selling off their tokens as they mine them could make the price unstable. As with any crypto project, adoption is always a huge hurdle. However, I wonder if that would be more of an issue for Ravencoin due to the fact that they have no standard team. I assume that that means that the chances there's people doing outreach specifically to promote the project or partnership with mainstream companies is probably lacking. Now, I could be wrong, but the downsides of not having a structured team could be lack of awareness of the project. Final thoughts. I think Ravencoin is very interesting. It definitely has a lot of growing and developing still to come in its future. But in the meantime, the project has garnished a lot of really positive press and community sentiment. I do think that their use case is very specific and could actually benefit from being on the blockchain, which is an important consideration to make because not everything needs to be put on the blockchain. With newer projects, it's really hard to gauge where one might see it in a few years because the markets and the crypto space change so quickly. I'm interested to see how successful they end up being in the future, and I believe that this project is one of those that you should keep track of going forward. Well, everyone, that about wraps it up for me in this video today. If anyone wants to chat more about crypto and non-crypto related topics, I mean, mostly non-crypto related topics, hop into my Discord and say hi. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Psst. Hey, if you're sad this video is over, don't be. I've got a ton of other content and all my playlists over here. Go check them all out. Let me know what you think in the comments down below.